All right, all right. So here we are, ready to get started, ready to go on with a new week. And uh, well, it is a pleasure having you guys here once again. It is great to know that we are, you know, ready to continue working and to continue learning. Uh, now, for tonight, we're going to be covering something that has a lot to do with, well, one of those things that is probably the topic that many people want to talk about, the, po the topic that many teachers like to teach about, but it's also a topic that becomes to show itself as a tricky one. Many people have problems when learning about it. Many people have issues when trying to remember the rules, but still, it is important, it is crucial, and it is fun to, to practice. Um, so yeah, tonight we're only going to be talking about comparisons, uh, making comparisons in, uh, well, a care and also making comparisons in a group. Those are also called superlatives. So the main things are going to be those, you know, talking about comparisons and also, well, talking about um, a small section of the language that we call questions of choice. But the main thing, the main thing is going to be comparatives. Now, hopefully you guys have had an amazing weekend. We're going to be talking about that too in a little bit. Um, just so you know, I will also be showing some important information or I will be sending you guys some important information that has to do with it specifically that, specifically, well, uh, let's see, okay. Um, well, the the way in which you're going to be using the comparatives and the superlatives, and which situations will be more common for you to face with those. But okay, uh, the first thing, the thing that we like to start with, or I mean, in my case, at least I like to start with, is the question for the night. It is a Monday, therefore, it is very, very likely that you guys have an idea of what the question is going to be. And, uh, well, the question this evening is relatively simple, you know. Many of you already know the answer, and it is, how was the weekend? I would like to start by hearing from Evelyn this time around. So tell me, Evelyn, how did your weekend go? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, very well. Okay. Anything anything fun happening this weekend? Um, I go to chart. Um, I walk in, in the park. Mm -hmm. Um, I ah uh, I buy buy. But but in supermaker and um, only okay good very good um so there is a, a, a different way to say that you know when you bought in the supermarket what you can say is i did groceries i did or do did or do did my um groceries esa es una, es una forma de decir, ¿verdad?, que fuimos a comprar. Pero cuando decimos shopping, esa es una palabra también, o sea, una situación que es importante tenerla clara. Cuando decimos shopping, estamos hablando de compras que no necesariamente eh, son de primera necesidad. Shopping normalmente va a ser para cosas como ropa o, qué sé yo, utensilios de belleza, cosas que pues en una lista de prioridades no necesariamente, ¿verdad? Van a ser lo primero. En cambio, groceries, when, do, when we do groceries, ahí sí, estamos hablando de comida, estamos hablando acerca de, qué sé yo, papel higiénico, estamos hablando acerca de agua, pasta dentrífica, all those things that are important for a person's well-being are going to be part of the groceries. Um, a ver, no significa que todo el tiempo la gente se acostumbra a decirlo así. A veces hay personas que simplemente dicen, I went shopping to the supermarket. Pero cuando decimos shopping, usualmente pues estamos hablando acerca de eso, ¿verdad? Que fuimos a hacer compras eh, no necesarias. O sea, compras que tal vez no, no son eh, pues de comida o cosas así que son primordiales. 
Entonces, did groceries or do my groceries podría ser también una versión, ¿verdad? Una forma de decirlo. But okay, great. It sounds like you had an interesting weekend. So, very nice. Very, very nice. Um, now, let's hear from Sandra. Sandra Vasquez, tell me, how was your weekend? Good evening, teacher and class. Good evening. My weekends when, uh, was very relaxing because I stay in my house and only the Sunday go to the church, mm -hmm. uh, only that. Okay, well, that sounds like a fun weekend, just staying home, just relaxing and sleeping. So nice, very nice. Yeah, that sounds pretty, pretty good. Okie dokie then. Um, how about the case for Jeremias? How was your weekend, Jeremias? Um, I worked on Sunday. I went to visit the family. And at the night when we went up to dinner, pupusas. Okay, that's great. That is very, very nice. Yeah, that is a staple. Esa es una palabra que, que casi nunca, o sea, la uso mucho, pero casi nunca se las explico. Ahorita me acordé. A staple. Okay, so when you talk about staple, y cuando mencionan también a stapler, sí, a stapler. Eh, ¿Alguien tiene idea de qué significa? Así nada más, la palabra staple. ¿Alguna idea de qué puede ser staple? ¿No? Bueno, eh, ahorita incluso a mí se me ha olvidado el significado de cómo se dice en español, pero es como que se llama lo que usamos. Ah, grapa. Sí, es una grapa. A ver, así, ¿verdad? Sí, en contexto normal es una grapa y un stapler es una engrapadora, ¿sí? Pero cuando alguien lo dice hablando acerca de estilos de vida, o sea, si yo digo, that's a staple in, in a Salvadorian life, significa que es una costumbre, ¿sí? O sea, es algo infalible, algo que debe ser, ¿verdad? Que está ahí siempre. Eso es un staple. Um, si ustedes hablan, por ejemplo, de un staple of people from the U.S., is that they speak English. That's a staple of... Uh, people from the from the United States. Uh, a staple from people from Spain is that most of them like ham. Most people from Spain like ham. So that's a staple for uh, Spanish people. What about a staple from people uh, that come from Italy? Well, maybe, maybe, maybe that they are good bakers. We can say that people from Italy are good bakers. That's a staple. Entonces, es como algo... Eh, muy común, algo muy característico. Eso sería un staple. Entonces, a staple, cuando when I say a staple of Salvadorians, es que es algo muy nuestro, ¿verdad? El comer pupusas los domingos o comer pupusas durante el fin de semana. That's something very Salvadorian. And that is why we mention it as a staple. Okay. Mm, well, thank you, Jeremias. And it sounds like, well, you had a nice weekend as well. So, very good. Thank you very much for sharing. Now, we're going to hear from... Um, Jenny, how about you, Jenny? How was your um, weekend? Hello. Oh, there we go. <laughs> In good evening. Good evening. I went to university and the complete the Amadeo certification system uh, does airline user. All right. Yeah, that sounds very interesting and very, very nice. Very fancy at the same time. Good. Very good. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay. How about Daisy? How was your weekend, Daisy Hernandez? Hello. Good evening. Hello there. Well, only studied for my mother and watched movies. Okay, so studying for midterms and also watching movies. In our case, in the university where I work, we actually finished the first, well, sorry, the second midterms um, this past week. So, yeah, I understand how it is. I understand that it is hard to prepare for the midterms. So, I hope you do great when you take them. 
Okay, uh, how about Isabel? How was your weekend? Um, very nice. I sleep uh, all day. Okay. And I play basketball with my friends in, in the evening and relaxing and see K-dramas. All right. Very nice. Yeah. It sounds like you uh, be, made your plan possible because I remember that on Friday, yeah, it was no, on Thursday, last Thursday, you told us that you were planning to um, to go play basketball with your friends and you did. So that's amazing. Very nice. And also the fact that, you know, you got to relax for a little bit. That is also pretty cool. So thank you very much for sharing. Uh, now, the last person for the night, the last person we're going to be hearing tonight is going to be Neftali. So tell me, Neftali, how was your weekend? Good evening. Uh, uh, we, we, we has, uh, we has, we has, we have, we have a great, uh, a great, a great uh, weekend. Mm -hmm. Where? Uh, why? Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, here in, in my in my uh, city, uh, they are, they were, they were celebrate to uh, Festival del Maíz. Very good. <laughs> In yes. Santa Maria. Yes, Santa Maria, yes. Okay. Today. And uh, it was it was it on, on Saturday and Sunday? Say yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. Sunday. Sunday. Oh, Sunday, cool. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see any promos for that, but very good. Yeah. How do how do we it's it looks like Santa Maria is a very active uh, town, and I didn't know. <laughs> the only thing the only thing I knew about Santa Maria is tacos marinita, that's like the the most regular thing for me. Also, of course, that I work there. Uh, but yeah, I almost never go downtown Santa Maria, so I almost never know what is happening. But that's great. It seems that you guys have a lot of fun. You have a lot of like activities for the people. So yes. very good, very, very nice. Thank you very much for sharing, Nathalie. Now we're going to move into the topic for this evening. Oh, ¿Saben qué? Se me hace un poco falta de respeto, así que vamos a ver. Uh, Edith, we're going to have to hear from you and also from Adriana. So tell me, Edith, how was your weekend? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my weekend was very good, relaxed. Um, on Saturday, I work on the platform, mm -hmm. I finish, almost finish. And on Sunday, my son visited me with his family. And I made two pizzas for them. All right, very, very nice. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, if you make them at yes. home, they are doing, they're going to be delicious. So, yes. great. Very nice. Very good. Thank you very much for sharing. It sounds like you had a very nice weekend, this one. So good. Very, very good. Um, Adriana, how about you, Adriana? How was your weekend? En un momento le contesto todas las preguntas de temprano, but tell me, Adriana, how was your weekend? Hi, teacher, classmate. Hello. Well, in, in my weekend was nice. Um, I had classes at the university and I visited my grandparents and I saw a um, Christmas movie. Oh, really? Are, are they already on? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a little bit too advanced, but that's good. You know, Christmas is... <laughs> Dude, it's not even... It's not even <laughs> November, but that's okay. That's okay. My family and I, we are trying to get a tree. We have been trying for the last couple of years, but I don't know if it's just because um, we got a tree so long ago that we find Christmas trees to be very expensive. I think that they're very expensive nowadays because last year, I remember I was looking at some trees that I liked 
and they were like two hundred dollars, and we thought like, no, nah, it's I mean too high of an investment because it's only going to be up for a month. So and then it's going to be stored, and maybe rats can damage it. So yeah, you know many things can happen to it. But yeah, maybe this year we're going to you know do the effort and try to get a, a Christmas tree. Because we like to have one, but in the last couple of years, we haven't really had uh, a Christmas tree. But okay, well, thank you guys very much for sharing all this nice information. We're going to jump now into the topic for this evening. Comparison with adjectives and questions of choice. Well, the questions of choice, of course, is going to be a little bit tinier than it should. But, well, we're going to start it with a conversation. All right, so the first conversation includes two people. It's going to take um, Mike and Wendy, and it has a lot to do with things related to geography. And the first conversation, it should go as following. Here's a geography quiz in the paper. Oh, I love geography. Ask me the questions. Sure. First question, which country is larger? China? Or Canada. I know Canada is larger is larger than China. Okay, next. What's the longest river in the Americas? Hmm. I think it's the Mississippi. Here's a hard one. Uh, which country is more crowded? Monaco or Singapore? I'm not sure. I think Monaco is more crowded. Okay, one more. Which South American capital city is the highest? La Paz, Quito, or Bogota? Oh, that's easy. Bogota is the highest. All right, people. So we have um, all these questions. And uh, well, the conversation, as I mentioned, is going to be relatively easy. It's a bit longer than we're usually um, practicing but still it's not a hard conversation but I what I want to do right now is I would like to take a couple minutes and I would like all of us to provide an answer to these questions tenemos aquí cuatro preguntas que son relacionadas con eh, la geografía así que me gustaría que las contestásemos Eh, antes de verdad seguir con, con el siguiente tema. So, let's hear. It's, they're going to be free, so anyone can answer them. If no one answers, then I might start asking you guys specifically. But here we go. Which country is larger, China or Canada? What do you think? Or what do you guys know? ¿Qué saben ustedes? Is it China larger than Canada? Or is Canada larger than China? No. Sorry? Canada is. Okay. Large. So you think Canada is larger than China. And that will be correct because Canada is actually the second largest country in the world. You know, it is a very, very big country with a small population. And uh, well, just in case you guys want to know, they are very open to immigrants. And yeah, Canada will be one of the largest countries in the world okay now moving on we're gonna hear the second question what's the longest river in the americas what's the longest river in the americas class what do you think hello sandra uh, it's mississippi okay so if we talk about length in a straight line, it might be the Mississippi River. However, if we're going to... Uh, Nathalie, perdón, ¿qué iba a mencionar? Mississippi River. Okay. Well, yes. here's a tiny detail. Aquí dice Americas. Yeah. If we talk about Americas, si dice Americas, se va a referir al continente americano. See, sí. so in the whole continent, it is said that it will be the Amazonas River. You know, the Amazonas River will be the longest river in the Americas. Of course, if we're talking, as I mentioned, in a straight line, it might be the Mississippi, 
But the the is, issue with Amazonas is that it has many different um, branches, and that makes it, you know, to be longer than Mississippi. Okay, next one up. Which country is more crowded, Monaco or Singapore? ¿Qué creen ustedes? Monaco or Singapore? Which country is more crowded? What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Any idea? Maybe from um, Jenny? What do you think, Jenny? Is Monaco more crowded than Singapore or is Singapore the most crowded of the bunch? Singapore. Okay. In terms of population, I mean, like how much people live in each country? Yes, Singapore will be the most populated. But there is a tiny difference. Populated is not the same as crowded. All right. When something is crowded, significa que está muy poblado. O sea, when something is crowded, digamos en el ejemplo específico de un evento, if you go to an, a, a concert, and if the concert is crowded, it means that it's packed, it's full of people, there is tons and tons of people, therefore it is crowded. Now, if um, the event or the thing is, let's say, just, um, what you might call it, it's just populated, like there is a lot of people, it's not the same, okay? Entonces, en este caso sería Mónaco. Porque si nos vamos a poner a hablar acerca de, de específicamente la cantidad de personas que viven en el país, sería Singapur que tenga, tenga más personas. Pero el que está más lleno de gente sería Mónaco. Porque pues la mayoría de personas viven en edificios en Mónaco. So they, pick, they believe a stack, one on top of another. So, yeah, it will be Mónaco, the more crowded. Sí, ahí como les digo, es la diferencia entre el verbo crowded y populated. If you talk populated, es cual tiene más personas en ese caso sí sería Singapur but if you say crowded o sea cual es más lleno o está más lleno sería Monaco now this one has a lot of debate with it but I want to see what you guys believe uh, which South American capital city is the highest La Paz, Quito or Bogotá aquí estamos hablando algo de local algo cercano a nosotros así que tell me guys which South American city capital city is the highest. La Paz, Quito, or Bogotá. ¿Qué creen ustedes? La Paz, Quito, Bogotá. ¿Cuál es la, la más alta de, 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 América, de América del Sur? Quito. Yes, sir. It will be Quito. The reason why, well, in terms of how high the city is, La Paz will be higher. ¿Sí? La Paz está mucho más alto que Quito. Porque si vamos a poner a hablar acerca de eso, sí, ¿verdad? Sería La Paz eh, la más alta. El problema está en que aquí menciona esta palabrita, capital city, ¿sí? Capital city. Y, well, according to some research that I did, I'm not saying that it's true, but I, that's what I learned. La Paz is not necessarily the capital city of Bolivia. The capital city of Bolivia has a different name. I don't remember the name, but it is not La Paz. La Paz is only one of the most important cities that um, Bolivia has. But... It is not necessarily its capital city. So there are many other cities, or I mean, La Paz is very, very high, and it is somehow a nominal capital. Like many people around the world know that La Paz is um, Bolivia's capital. However, it's not necessarily the case. It is a nominal capital, but it's not an official capital. The official capital of uh, Bolivia has a totally different name. So yeah, uh, it would be Quito. If you're talking about capital cities, Quito would be the highest capital city. Not the highest city, but the highest capital city. All right. Now, comparison with adjectives. A ver, aquí sí esta noche va a haber un montón, montón de explicación en español. Porque necesito que esto nos quede lo más claro posible. Yo sé que es un tema que muy, muy probablemente también antes hemos revisado, ¿verdad? En alguna clase antes hemos visto porque pues es uno de los temas más comunes en el idioma inglés, pero pues nunca está de más una explicación, un, un refresco, ¿verdad?, de lo que se sabe. Ok, importante recordar, 
las comparison adjectives o los adjetivos comparativos van a eh, compartir muchas reglas con los verbos en tercera persona. Y esto es quizá lo primero a conocer, ¿verdad? Comparten muchas, muchas reglas. Hay un montón de adjetivos que se pueden utilizar porque eso también es muy cierto. La lista es muy, muy, muy vasta. Y pues no siempre utilizamos, los, eh, utilizamos todo, ¿verdad? Ahora, en este caso, es probable que el superlativo, que es la última columna, sea más importante que lo que en algún momento, cuando hablábamos acerca de los verbos, principalmente los verbos en pasado, llegó a ser el caso, ¿verdad?, del de eh, presente perfecto, ¿sí? ¿Por qué? Porque es mucho más común que nosotros querramos describir o hablar acerca de cuál o qué es lo mejor en un grupo, ¿verdad? O sea, o si no lo peor, o si no lo más lento, si no lo más lindo, si no lo más aburrido. Who knows? But we always want to be mentioning or pointing to who has, well, a better understanding of something depending on the group or depending on the people they are surrounded by. Okay. But now, the rules. The main or the most easy rules that we have to follow. If you find this, uh, be, um, sorry. Is a CVC, a CVC word or a CVC compared adjective. CVC, if you guys remember, states stands for content, consonant, uh, so, sorry, <laughs> consonant, vowel consonant. That's the one. Consonant, vowel consonant. So if you find this CVC, that means that it is a very short word. Aquí tenemos el ejemplo con big. Big es una palabra muy corta y tiene una consonante, una vocal y una consonante. So, consonant, vowel, consonant, CBC. If you ever come across one of those, si, si ustedes se cruzan con cualquiera de estas palabras que son así cortitas y pues que eh, tengan esa estructura, what you have to do is the following. Very similar to the verb, you're going to take the word and you're going to double the last um, letter. Okay, you have to double the last letter. Vamos a duplicar la última letra and then we're going to add ER. Sí, duplicar la última letra y agregamos el ER. Ahora, ya no va a significar grande, sino que va a significar más grande. Sí, va a, ser, va a pasar de ser big a ser bigger. Sí, bigger. Entonces, ese es uno, ¿verdad? Una de las, de las, de las reglas que podemos seguir o que vamos a tener que seguir. Now we have the next one. We have dry. Every time you find or come across one of these letters that, uh, sorry, words that has the letter Y at the end, well, and mostly, mostly, if it's a one syllable word, see, ¿sí? una palabra de solamente una sílaba, significa que ustedes van a poder hacer el siguiente cambio. Sí, las dos cosas que deben conjuntarse para que se pueda hacer ese cambio son que sea una palabra corta, que sea de una sola sílaba y que además termine con Y, ¿ok? Entonces, what do we do? Well, we simply erase the Y and we replace it with a I, ¿sí? Vamos a eliminar, ¿verdad? Eh, la Y y vamos a reemplazarla con una Y latina. So that is the first step. Cuando tenemos este tipo de verbos, perdón, de, de adjetivos así cortitos, el primer paso es ese, ¿verdad? Recordar que vamos a tener que eliminar la Y y colocar una Y latina en su lugar. Y justo después, we're going to have to add um, ER. Sí, el mismo caso, ¿verdad? Que en el bigger, en el bigger, pues solamente lo que se hacía era que se duplicaba la letra y luego se agregaba ER. Pues aquí igual, se, se va a cambiar una de las letras de la palabra y luego vamos a colocar el ER. Y eso ya nos da la pauta de que estamos hablando acerca de un comparativo. And then the, la, the, the next one is the easiest one. Sí, el, el siguiente, ¿verdad? Es quizá el más primero de entender de todos. When you talk about the easiest one, of course, we're going to be talking about adjectives that don't have a lot of changes. Esos adjetivos no tienen muchos cambios. Los cambios principales son simplemente que le vas a agregar una ER. Ahora, cabe otra vez mencionar esto se usa solamente con adjetivos cortitos, ¿sí? Agregar el ER solamente será con adjetivos cortos, adjetivos de una sílaba. 
adjectives that are longer, adjectives that have maybe three, maybe four, or even two um, syllables, those are going to turn into these words. Sí, se van a convertir en estas palabras que son un poco más extendidas. We're going to have, for example, famous. That is the adjective, right? Yo estoy describiendo a alguien que es famoso. Pero si alguien conoce a alguien que sea más famoso, well, they can say that that person, that thing is more famous. Yeah, more famous. Significa entonces que cuando tenemos palabras así en los adjetivos que son un poco largas, lo que vamos a hacer es agregar un more. We're not going to say famouser. Sí, no vamos a tener que decir famouser. En caso de beautiful, no vamos a decir beautifuler. Y le vamos a, a aplicar la L, ¿verdad? Porque yo dije, no, cuando está, o sea, así, vocal, ¿cómo es? Consonante, vocal, consonante, se le duplica la, la, la última letra y luego se le agrega la R. No, no vamos a hacer eso, ¿ok? Aquí solamente es beautiful. Y para hacer el comparativo será more beautiful, and that's it, more beautiful. For famous, more famous, and that's it. Ok, no se complican más allá de eso, sino que simplemente ahí se queda. Sí, more famous, more beautiful. Um, that will be basically it. All right. Um, if we go, for example, to talk about the other ones, we have here um, good as the adjective. And these ones are as the same that happens with the verbs, irregulars. Sí, tenemos también algunos que son irregulares. El caso, ¿verdad?, eh, de los verbos, o sea, los verbos irregulares, cada uno de estos cambia en su forma, cada uno de estos cambia, eh, por decirlo así, a su gusto. Entonces, el adjetivo good va a tener como comparativo better. No va a ser nada ni siquiera similar, ni siquiera parecido a la forma, ¿verdad?, que tiene en su forma básica, ¿sí? Good pasa a ser better, si ustedes se fijan, o sea, el cambio es total, ¿verdad? Ahora, no existen tantos de estos, o sea, la cantidad de adjetivos comparativos que van a ser así es bastante reducida, así que, o sea, no vamos a tener que complicarnos con aprendernos tantos, tantos de estos, um, pero sí hay algunos cuantos, ¿verdad? Then we have, for example, bad. Bad is another of the examples of... Um, irregular adjectives, bad is going to turn into worse, okay? Bad will be worse. De malo, ahora peor, okay? So those are um, some of the examples of comparative adjectives. Ahora, cuando utilizamos los adjetivos comparativos? Estos se usan siempre con dos cosas, okay? Tenemos dos cosas, dos personas, y queremos simplemente hacer una comparación entre esas dos cosas o dos personas. Es allí cuando los vamos a utilizar, no con grupos. Con grupos vamos a ver, a ver la siguiente, que sería los superlativos. Dígame, Edith. Can I use better with well? Sorry? Can I use better with well? Um, adjective, well. No. Mm, I don't think so. I mean, for example, if you're describing that something is, uh, digamos, que alguien está bien y si alguien está uh -huh. mejor, um, yeah, sure. Yes, you can say it like that. You can say that someone is better. Like, you know, if someone has been well before, but now they are feeling better. Yes, you can say better. Yes, 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 you could use it like that. Ok, pero, pero entonces, los comparativos, sí, así como estos con el ER o con more, estos solamente se van a utilizar cuando estamos haciendo, ¿verdad?, esa comparación entre dos cosas, ¿ok? Um, pueden ser dos cosas singulares o dos cosas plurales. O sea, si por ejemplo ustedes están queriendo comparar dos grupos de personas, pues igual, ¿verdad? O sea, se usan eh, comparativos. Pero si ustedes están queriendo encontrar el mejor o la mejor versión de algo, en ese caso se utilizarán los superlativos, ¿sí? Y los superlativos tienen una característica que pues básicamente es inamovible. Y es el hecho de que se utiliza la partícula o el artículo the siempre, ¿ok? En español ya les he mencionado esto, ¿verdad? Que tenemos esa costumbre de, de que casi que a todo le decimos él, la, y pues utilizamos eh, en, de forma exagerada quizás a veces 
el artículo o los artículos como estos. Pero cuando estamos hablando acerca de los, eh, bueno, de las palabras en inglés, esto no, no va a ser el caso, ¿verdad? O sea, los superlativos se van a utilizar solo en algunos eh, casos específicos, eh, simplemente cuando vamos a buscar al mejor de un grupo. O sea, el grupo puede ser um, de tres, puede ser de cuatro, puede ser de más, ¿sí? Pero estamos tratando de encontrar, o sea, como la, la, la persona o el ser, ¿verdad? O el grupo que está por encima de todos aquellos, ¿ok? Todos los demás. Pueden ser, así como pueden ser dos, perdón, pueden ser tres, pueden ser cuarenta. Entonces, pero el que es el mejor o el más rápido o el más eh, bonito, el más feo, el más grande, ese es el que va a ser representado con el superlativo, ¿sí? Entonces, por eso, ¿verdad? Eh, se debe entender comparativo, sí, solamente entre dos, superlativo con grupos de tres, hasta los que ustedes quieran. Así que eh, eso es algo, o sea, también, ¿verdad? Importante a tomar en cuenta. So, superlative, if we are, for example, going to look at how we do the comparative with ER at the end, a superlative is going to be EST. Okay, the most common way you guys are going to end a superlative is going to be EST. This only goes, of course, for those that are short. Sí, para aquellos que son cortos, los mismos que son en su forma comparativa, sí, ¿verdad? Que tienen este cambio, pues de forma muy, muy similar va a suceder con el superlativo. O sea, simplemente se va a cambiar en el IST, o sea, el EST. Ahora, ¿qué sucede con, eh, los, con los que son largos? Bueno, en lugar de ser more, ahora va a ser most. Sí, we're not going to say more, more famous, we're going to say the most famous. El más famoso. It's not going to be more beautiful. It's going to be the most beautiful. The most beautiful. Um, it's not going to be, for example, better. It will be the best. The best. It's not going to be worse. It's going to be the worst. Ahora, importante con este, el último principalmente, porque worse se parece mucho a cómo se pronuncia worst. O sea, pero worst tiene un sonido de T al final, ¿verdad? Entonces ahí la diferencia. Worse y luego worst. Um, pero bueno, so we have uh, all these that are going to be comparatives and all these that are going to be superlatives. En un momento les voy a solicitar que ustedes mismos creen también algunos ejemplos, ¿verdad? Haciendo uso de estos. And that moment is going to be just about now. Ahora, ¿alguna duda antes de movernos, perdón, al siguiente, a la siguiente parte? ¿Alguna duda que tengan con esta sección específica, con la, la utilización de los adjetivos comparativos y superlativos? All is all right. Okay, okay. Well, um, now we have some examples here. In these examples, we have, well, very similar to the to the ones we had before. Some of them are going to be for comparatives and others for superlatives. Which country is larger, China or Canada? Well, you guys already know uh, that it's going to be Canada is larger than China. The most common way to make a comparison is by using then. Esa es otra cosa también. Esa es la forma más común de hacer una comparación. We use then. We use the comparative y we use then. Sí. En las comparaciones nada más. O sea, cuando estamos hablando de dos cosas. Si hablamos acerca de superlaciones, pues ahí ya es diferente, ¿verdad? Um, so, yeah. So, which country is larger? Well, China, Canada or China? Canada is larger than China. So, the comparison... It, or the comparison is that, yes, Canada is larger than China. Now, what happens when we talk about superlatives? Which city has the largest population? ¿Cuál ciudad tiene la mayor población? We have three examples. We have Tokyo, Mexico City, or Sao Paulo. Well, Tokyo, in this case, has the largest population of the three. Okay, so from the three in the selection, Tokyo has the largest population. Now, this one is an example of a question of choice because here we are narrowing it down to three people. Now, it is very important that you guys keep in mind that when you ask questions of choice, the most that you're going to provide is going to be five options, okay? More than five options, it is not going to be okay. 
Sí, si ustedes van a hacer una pregunta como esta y van a ofrecer, o sea, aquí, ¿verdad? Ustedes saben que llegan a un punto en la pregunta en la cual crean una lista, ¿sí? Ustedes ofrecen cuáles podrían ser las opciones eh, desde su perspectiva, digamos, o desde el estudio que tal vez ya han hecho o la idea que, que han tenido en algún, en algún caso. Entonces, once you have that, una vez que hayan hecho la lista, no deberán sobrepasar una cantidad de cinco ejemplos. O sea, por ejemplo, aquí yo podría mencionar, qué sé yo, um, Austin eh, or Madrid, let's say. So those are the examples that I would like to add. Um, so yeah, will be Tokyo, Mexico City, Sao Paulo, Austin or Madrid. No sé si esas son, son ciudades muy pobladas, pero vamos a colocarlas como ejemplos. So no more than this, ¿sí? No más de estas, de esta cantidad. Si yo voy a, quiero agregar más de estas, entonces la mejor forma de hacerlo será solamente dejarla abierta, ¿verdad? La pregunta. O sea, solo decir, which city has the largest population, ¿sí? Hasta ahí. Si yo quiero agregar más, o sea, ya no se deberá hacer. Entonces mejor solo dejo la pregunta como una pregunta abierta y pues que la persona ahí, ella ofrezca su, um, su opción, su opinión. So yeah, which city has the largest population and they can tell whatever they want. However, if you want to narrow down the options, well, you can do it, but up to five options. Okay, then, what is the most beautiful mountain in the world? Esto también va a ser una de esas preguntas que a veces son complicadas. Cuando hablamos de cosas que son eh, cuantificables, o sea, cosas que pueden ser probadas, es un poco más sencillo, ¿verdad? O sea, si yo, por ejemplo, pregunto por esto, por cuál es la ciudad con la mayor población, pues hay estudios, hay formas en las cuales alguien puede averiguar cuál es la ciudad que tenga mayor población. Pero si yo voy a hablar acerca de cosas como la belleza, cosas como la, qué sé yo, eh, paciencia, cosas así, son situaciones un poco más abstractas, son cosas que son un tanto más complicadas de poder medir. Entonces, cuando nos enfrentamos a ese tipo de preguntas, o sea, si yo tengo que contestar una pregunta como esta, es importante una vez más, hace un par de días eh, les mencionaba, ¿verdad? Que pues con algunas respuestas, con algunas sugerencias, es mejor decir I think, I, su I suppose, I believe. O sea, porque eso deja claro a los demás que esta es mi opinión, ¿sí? Que no estoy diciendo que esto es lo más certero que hay, sino que esta es mi opinión. I think, I suppose, I believe. O sea, yo creo, supongo, sí, um, o pues, pues creo una vez más. Pero de esa forma será la mejor eh, para contestar, ¿verdad? Preguntas como estas. Si alguien me pregunta cuál es lo más lindo, cuál es lo más calmado, cuál es lo más eh, peligroso, o sea, puede que sea difícil para mí medir con exactitud cuál de todas sea. Entonces yo mejor digo, I think, then I of course mention what is my example. I think Mount Fuji is the most beautiful. So what is the most beautiful mountain in the world? I think Mount Fuji is the most beautiful. Muy bien. Entonces, ahora que tenemos estos ejemplos así de preguntas y respuestas, quiero escuchar algunos que vengan de ustedes. Some examples that you guys may create. Examples of superlatives, examples of comparatives. Si quieren hacer los superlativos, simplemente piensen en, por ejemplo, cuál es la persona más importante de su vida, cuál es el, el objeto, ¿verdad? Que más utilizan y basado en esto lo podemos crear, podemos crear una oración. Um, Edith, tell me. Comparative, my husband is older than me. All right. And superlative English is easier than math. Okay, sorry, the support lets you was? English is easier than maths. Maths? Esa sería una... Um, ah, comparativa. Comparativa, uh, sí. Uh, sorry. Um, maybe, we can, maybe we can say English is the most interesting. Si estamos hablando acerca de, uh, de, de materias, maybe you can uh, say that. Okay. Uh -huh. English is the most interesting. Ahora, aquí una vez más, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando acerca de un adjetivo como interesting, entonces pueda que yo mejor agregue esto al final. To me. English is the most interesting to me. 
O sea, para mí es el más interesante, pero para otras personas pueda que no lo sea. Entonces, eh, a eso es a lo que me refería, ¿verdad? Es lo que debemos tener cuidado cuando nos enfrentamos a esa clase de oraciones. Um, Kevin is tall, but Mario is taller than Kevin. Ok, uh, solamente podríamos decir Kevin is tall, but Mario is taller. Sí, Estos son, esas oraciones así se llaman oraciones con objeto indirecto. Uy, perdón. Ok, so Kevin is tall, but Mario is taller. Muy bien, Kevin is tall, but Mario is taller. Hasta ahí sería, sería más correcto, ¿verdad? Porque ya al colocar el taller than Kevin, no. Tal vez puedo decir, but Mario is taller than him, sí. Pero than Kevin, ya no. Ok, porque sería también repetición de nombre. Entonces, eh, no se ve bien eso en una, una sola oración, mencionar dos veces el mismo nombre. Y más si nos referimos a la misma persona, ¿verdad? Ok. Uh, any other example you guys may have? ¿Algún otro ejemplo que podamos tener por ahí guardado? Teacher. Uh -huh. My house is smaller than mother. Ok. My house is smaller than my mother's. Mi casa es más pequeña que la de mi mamá. My house is smaller than my mother's. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. That is a very good example. Thank you. Okay, an example of a superlative. ¿Algún superlativo que nos puede ocurrir por ahí? Teacher, mm -hmm. I am the happiest woman in the world. Okay, I'm the happiest woman in the world. Okay, woman in the world. Very good. That is a nice example, and I totally hope that you are. All right. Any other example you guys may think of right now? The river, the Lempa River is uh, is um, uh, the the longest in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. It's the longest okay. in El Salvador. Yes. This okay. is superlative. Yes, that is a superlative. The Lempa River is the longest in El Salvador. Great. Very, very good. Nice example. Okay, um, maybe two or three more examples. Any other examples you people can think of right now? Hmm. It can be comparative or superlative. The, for example, uh, El Salvador is is a smaller smaller country in America Central. So it will be the smallest smallest mm -hmm. country in El Salvador, in El Central America. This is good. Okay, El Salvador is the smallest country in oui. Central America. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do CA in Central America. All right, very good. Um, so, yeah. Ahora, por ejemplo, si yo no estoy seguro... Digamos que tal vez en algún caso yo tuviese la duda, ¿verdad? ¿Será que es El Salvador? ¿Será que es Belice? Yo puedo decir, El Salvador es one of, ¿sí? One of, uno de los países más pequeños, ¿sí? One of. One of, sí, one of. El Salvador es one of. Y ahí cualquier, cualquiera, ¿verdad? Eh, de las cosas, si yo no estoy seguro si es así exactamente, I can say one of. One ok, one of, yes. Uh, let's hear another example. Um, somebody else who has an example right now? In chat, I yeah. mm -hmm. eh, Yo tenía una. Eh, Curry is the most famous in the basketball. Uh, yes, Curry is the most uh, famous in basketball. Ahora vamos a poner in basketball right now, porque hace unos días era um, LeBron. <laughs> Así que, uh -huh. so yes, Stephen Curry is the most uh, famous, bueno, sería famous player aquí, eso sí, most famous player in um, basketball right now. Muy bien, ahora, me decía, perdón, Evelyn, tenía otro ejemplo por ahí. No, no, teacher. No. Oh, okay. Me bueno. ejemplo, teacher. 
Sí, dígame, Pablo. Eh, Santa Ana is the most eh, is the most eh, beautiful eh, sería. I, I think eh, mm -hmm. I think Santa, I think Santa Ana is the most eh, beautiful eh, in El Salvador. Okay. The most beautiful. Ahí digo pienso porque puede ser que, que no. Mm -hmm. Porque puede que sea, qué sé yo, cabañas. San Miguel, San Miguel puede ser. Eh, if you're talking about the hottest, maybe. Sí, pero the most beautiful. No, no, ahí no voy a pelear. Esa, esa, esa no la voy a pelear. No. <laughs> Maybe Zulután, I don't know. No, Zulután has too many mountains. In my, in, for my taste, tiene demasiadas montañas. Así que no, Mucho, muchas calles así como bien, bien, bien feas. La verdad que a mí sí me gusta bastante Santana. I like Huachapan too, but yeah, I think Santana is a bit better than Huachapan because the roads are better. I think that's what makes Santana better as well. But okay, good. It is uh, great, guys. You have done. Uh, very good work with this. Now, we have the questions of choice. These are the ones that I was mentioning before. When we use questions of choice, well, we're going to use them whenever we're talking about, um, well, situations when we're offering exactly that, you know, a choice. We are providing people with a choice. Importante, muy, muy, muy importante recordar una cosa. Mm. Las palabras que vamos a utilizar al principio de las questions of choice normalmente van a ser what o which, ¿ok? Which se refiere a cuál directamente y what es, o sea, también, ¿verdad? En ocasiones puede entenderse como cuál. Entonces, what o which, esas son las eh, palabras principales que vamos a utilizar con las questions of choice. Ahora, Depende también de qué estilo de pregunta estamos haciendo. Because sometimes we're going to be asking for comparatives. If we only offer two options, that is a straight up a comparative. Okay. If you only also, uh, are going to use two options. Also, we're going to have to pay attention to, um, well, the adjective that is being used. Because here in the adjective, you will see or you will be able to find if you're talking about, once again, a comparative or a superlative question. Of course, if you see that the question is written with ER there, then that means that it is a comparative. If you notice that the question is written with a EST there, EST, then that means it is a superlative question. And uh, what they want to know is that what is your idea over, well, the one that is on top, on top of the list, on top of everyone. But of course, if you only have a comparison, you only, or well, the people only want to know what is your choice between the two, you know, between those two options. If you have a look here, I have the most. So if I see or hear that the question includes the most in it, then I will have to know immediately that this person is asking me a superlative question. Superlative questions, once again, can have up to um, five different options. The most regular is going to be between three and four. That is like the, the most regular way in which people are going to ask superlative questions. But you can add up to five different options in the question. But okay. So how is it going to sound? How are we supposed to pronounce this with all these um, arrows in the middle? Well, uh, very simple, actually. The first one, the first question is, which city is bigger, Bangkok or Beirut? Which city is bigger, Bangkok or Beirut? If you notice, when I get to Bangkok, hay una pequeña elevación, ¿verdad?, en la voz. O sea, como que va hacia arriba el pronunciar Bangkok o Beirut. Y, o sea, Beirut a veces incluso se aconseja que se acompañe con la cabeza la pronunciación de ese tipo de, um, 
de oraciones o de preguntas porque dejan más clara la intención, ¿verdad? Pero, ¿por qué será entonces que se debe colocar esta disminución de sonido al final? O sea, why do we go that way? Why is it not only by Bangkok or Beirut? Well, the reason why is very simple. Because it is a double H question. Sí, es una pregunta con doble V y H. Si ustedes se acuerdan hace días, yo les dije, ¿verdad? Those questions that are yes, no questions have a rising intonation at the end. Sí, if for example, I say, are you okay? The rising intonation is at the end. If I say, for example, are you ready? The rising intonation is once again at the end. But when you have double H um, questions, the falling intonation is going to be at the end. Let's take as, a, as an example. What is your name? You see, name, name. It's going down. How are you? Once again, how? How are you? It's going down. So, for many occasions, you have to keep that in mind. Another a specific situation here is also before you mention the examples, before you mention the options that you're providing the people, remember that the following intonation is to be used because you want the first option to make an impact. You want the first option to be striking. And therefore, it's also advisable that if, uh, well, if you're offering someone something and you want that as the answer, you have to offer that first. Now, if you're asking someone a question about a specific detail like here, like which city is bigger, Beirut or, or sorry, Bangkok or Beirut, well, mention the one that you don't want people to answer first. Okay, so for example, I know that maybe Beirut is more um, populated or more, or it's, it's bigger. Then I mentioned Beirut as the second option. If it was a list of three, I will mention Beirut like in the middle because the first one is almost never or almost never has to be the option, okay? Cuando estamos haciendo preguntas, por ejemplo, como en un examen, eso o sea, es importante que lo entendamos, ¿verdad? Si fuese como un examen, vamos a mencionar primero con la rising intonation, o sea, con el sonido hacia arriba, con la entonación más grande o más alta, vamos a mencionar primero aquello que no queremos que nos contesten. Sí, o sea, por ejemplo, la respuesta correcta en este caso sería Beirut, pero yo lo dejo de segundo porque así suena como menos, eh, menos emocionante. Y de esa forma tratamos de engañar ¿verdad? a la persona a que me dé la opción que escucho más fuerte. Si la opción que escucho más fuerte fue eh, Bangkok, entonces esa será la opción que esta persona probablemente um, quiera tomar. So that's very, very important for you guys when you're asking these kinds of questions. Now, we have the second option or the second sentence. Which country is the most interesting? Korea, Brazil, or Greece? Korea, Brazil, or Greece? So you hear that at the end, we don't say Greece. We say Greece, like it's falling. Now, what happens if I play Greece right here? Which country is the most interesting? Greece, Brazil, or, sorry, or Korea. You now hear that Korea is going down. Therefore, it means that Korea is um, going on a lower uh, pitch and it's going to be the last word of the sentence. Así que eso es algo bien importante, ¿verdad? Con las preguntas, eh, pues, de double H questions, la última sílaba, la última palabra, siempre va a tener esa entonación de caída, porque estamos cerrando la pregunta. Y cuando tenemos este tipo de preguntas, así que son preguntas con opciones, bueno, tendremos que mencionar la mayoría de las opciones eh, elevando un poco la voz, pero la última, ya que es una pregunta de eh, double H, pues la vamos a hacer, ¿verdad?, con una falling intonation. Bueno, ya me pasé un poquito del tiempo. Uh, for now, guys, I think that is it. That is all. Um, well, I just wanted to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your participation. I am sure I will see you guys tomorrow again. So, yeah, have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. Good see you night, tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night.